your wardrobe is very particular to you and it should reflect who you want to be now and in the future because your wardrobe your clothing uh your makeup these items are tools that you're using to create yourself it's like your costume that you're putting on for the role you're playing in the play that we're all a part of essentially get rid of in my i would recommend getting rid of all the items that aren't your favorite out of your wardrobe out of your space so that you're not having this version of yourself that you don't like reflected back to you so you're having reflected back to you only things that you do like and from that place of more strength you can build you can build up by putting in things that you do like more and more and more and curating and getting rid of what you dislike more and more and more here are the things in my wardrobe that i feel like support me in being my authentic self yeah let's talk about it so the first item in my wardrobe, this looks worn and dirty, probably because it is. This is my nightgown. Um, I love it. We have my Aliyah dress, which I is one of my favorite things in my wardrobe. This dress, you put it on and immediately you're dressed up. You look really polished and beautiful. I love this dress so, so, so much. Okay, here we have my three J. Crew slip dresses. One is a more polished one. That's, I think, my favorite. This is the slinkiest, the kind of highest quality slip dress. It's gorgeous. And these are the same slip dress, but here's a long version and here's a short version. These are great, like, French girl style staples. I love these pieces, but they feel a little casual for me these days. I prefer to wear something more like this. That makes me feel more dignified, I guess. This is a Doan dress, which I don't know if you can tell, but I'm obsessed with Doan dresses. It's the black version of the dress I'm wearing now. So, so, so pretty. These dresses are among the most treasured items in my collection because they just really make me feel like myself. They're casual enough that they can be worn day to day, but I feel really polished. I feel really feminine and kind of princessy in these, honestly. And they're just perfection. Like I really feel like myself, particularly in this white dress. And I think it's important to note that like different colors obviously make us feel different ways and like affect our energy in different ways and this white one just feels like the epitome of me another beautiful doan dress the amount that i am checked out by good looking men on the street when i wear this dress is honestly amazing and i think the thing is this dress is like i didn't realize it exactly when buying it but this dress is like a very like male gaze dress not in a bad way, it's very sweet, it's very feminine, it's like a very simple, pretty design. It gets a lot of looks. So if you're looking for a great like first date dress or even just like a dress to wear on dates that's also comfortable, this Doan dress is, is a good one for you. And then the last Doan dress in my collection, a piece I love, and the first Doan dress I think I ever bought is this one it has this kind of medieval vibe to it um it's very long it can be worn off the shoulders or on the shoulders it's very flowy and beautiful and these ties are actually what keep it on your body if they get undone it's, the dress is going to fall off of you my sandy lang dress this was my favorite dress last summer and i still love it i need to wear it more but i um my i usually wear it with my chanel flats and my chanel flats like suddenly feel too small for me so i haven't been wearing it as much because i don't have the right shoes for it such a statement piece you know i am really not loving this dress from ula johnson i put it on recently and was like i feel like a cupcake it used to be one of my favorite dresses i'm keeping it for a little while longer to see if i actually wear it and if i change my mind and if not i'll get rid of it
This is one of my party dresses. It's a Realization Par slip dress. And I just love the super feminine pattern. Um, I think I'm gonna wear it to a barbecue I'm going to this Saturday. Okay, here are two like cotton house dresses. They're both from Brandy Melville. I, like I said, I wear these around the house when I wanna feel feminine. Like I like doing like chores around the house in a dress, but I'm not gonna do my chores in this beautiful dress. Like I don't wanna mess it up. So I have these kind of Brandy Melville flowy chill slip dresses that I can do kind of like house chores in. They're great for summer because they're super um, like cool material and I can cook in them. I'm not worried about like a little splatter of like tomato sauce or something. Another house dress. This is very Laura Ashley in my opinion. It feels very 80s, very like feminine Laura Ashley vibes, which I like. I've said this in past videos, but my outfit uniform for, a, for like a day-to-day -day basis, which I characterize as just like an outfit that I feel really comfortable in and that makes me feel like the best version of myself and is like everyday wear, is a dress like this, a Doen dress basically, and a purse and cute, and cute walking shoes. Shoes I can walk around the city in because I walk around the city like crazy. I'll show you my everyday outfit here. Okay, this is God's honest truth. If you ran into me this summer, there would be like a one in two chance that I'd be wearing this exact outfit. I'd be wearing these espadrilles, this Doen dress, this L.L. Bean boat and tote bag, <laughs> ignore Loki and his toy, um, my Celine sunglasses and my cap. Here are my two French girl tees. I designed this t-shirt and had them produced uh, ethically in the garment district here in New York City. I actually mainly wear these to work out. I wore one of these to Pilates yesterday. This is a Brandy Melville t-shirt that I wear to exercise in. Next up, this is a really pretty little sundress that my friend thrifted for herself and then gave to me and I wear it all the time. It's super, super comfortable. It has these like shoulder pads, which I think like when something has like big shoulders, it just makes you look thinner because it makes like your torso and your like hips look narrower than they are in proportion to your shoulders. I just like the way it looks on me. Before we continue, I just want to point out like what makes me feel like the best version of myself is when I'm very feminine, is when I wear like white or black clearly. And like long dresses are definitely what I prefer. So it's good to know like what makes you feel like the best version of yourself so that you can actively buy more of that when you need to add things to your wardrobe and get rid of things that don't make you feel like the best version of yourself. You don't have to be able to like articulate it as clearly as I do. You just have to know what feels right to you and what doesn't feel right and get rid of what doesn't feel right and keep what does feel right to you. This is a really pretty pleated dress that I got at the thrift shop for like $25, $35, something like that. Um, I love this dress so much. It's mainly a dress I wear in winter, but it reminds me very much of like Coco Chanel vibes, Wednesday Adam vibes. So I'm like so here for it. Next up, this is a gorgeous dress from the brand Something Navy. Um, it looks very Victorian, so I have to be careful. It doesn't look like I'm like cosplaying the Victorian era, um, but I love it so much. And I can't leave the house in this dress without getting complimented on it. Again, it feels very feminine. It's very long. Um, yeah, love this. Something else I've noticed that I like um, is that I like things that kind of are more of a statement. Like I don't like when it's too basic or too simple. That doesn't make me feel good. What I like is when it's like a little bit, a little bit maybe like fancier or more polished than the normal person would go, but um, that's what makes me feel good. Here's a Saint Laurent velvet dress. 
very Christmassy. I love this so much. My mom got it for me from the real real and can't wait to wear it. So this was a piece that I was kind of surprised I wanted to get, but when I saw it at the thrift shop and I tried it on, I was like, this is incredible. Like I need this in my wardrobe. So you don't need to necessarily like understand why you like what you like. You just need to like trust yourself when you find something that you love. Just trust your heart, I think. Um, and I think this goes really well with like my ultra feminine dresses, like with a dress like this. Putting this leather jacket on top adds such a cool look. Like it feels very Kate Moss to me to have like a super feminine dress and then the leather jacket and then the kind of like messy hair. Love this piece in my wardrobe. Wouldn't have thought I would want this for my wardrobe, but like my body, my heart was like, oh my God, absolutely hell yeah. In fact, I was shopping with my friend at the time when I bought this and she was like, that's kind of a surprising choice for you. And I was like, I know, right? To be honest, you're not gonna get it right every time. You know, you might buy something like this because your heart's like, yes, yes, and then you never wear it and then you end up getting rid of it the year after. Like, it's also a matter of trial and error, seeing what feels right to you and seeing what doesn't. And even just like honing your kind of like, the mechanism of like knowing what feels right to you and what doesn't is also a matter of trial and error. Okay, these are like my homey comfy sweaters. First off is my favorite sweater that I own, um, the Metropolitan Museum of Art sweatshirt. It's a classic, it's stained from my skincare, it has food on it, like honestly this thing has taken a beating because I wear it when I'm at home. This is an old cashmere sweater that belonged to my dad that he was getting rid of because it has a few holes in it. Um, where are the holes, see? Here's a hole, someone tried to repair it with some red thread that doesn't match at all. There are a few more holes back here. And I was like, I want this sweater. It's so soft, it's like a uniglow cashmere sweater. So oversized and like, I will wear this at home when I'm cold and just like be so comfy and cozy. But I wouldn't wear it out of the house. Okay, this is actually just like a cashmere sweater that I wear all the time in the winter. It's from J. Crew and cropped and I'm like quite petite. I'm 5'4 and have a really small waist. So this sweater is like a dream come true because it fits like perfectly and is cropped. So it's not super long on me. And then this is like a Johnson, Johnston's of Elgin. Um, it's a Scottish cashmere brand. This brand makes the cashmere clothing for the British royal family. So it's just such a pretty sweater, but because I'm not sure about this color on me, I mainly wear it around the house. Also, this cashmere is next level soft. It's really nice cashmere. This is a sporty and rich sweater. It was kind of expensive, I thought, and you know on the tag it was like this is made of like the finest scottish wool and whatever it's a really high quality piece and i was like whatever um but i wanted it so i got it i liked how like thick and stiff it was and i have to say this sweater is really high quality and nice like i totally notice what they say about the quality that they're mentioning like it's like really stiff it just it has a lot of structure to it which i like and which i think looks really chic in the winter and i wore this under my winter coat like it would like show with my winter my wool winter coat like the lapels are closing here and it just looked really elegant so if you have the opportunity to buy a sporty and rich piece of knitwear i actually highly recommend very nautical chanel sweater Little CC logo there, has a cute little CC, these pretty leather buttons. The details on this are exceptional. Um, it's not the comfiest sweater I own, but it is probably the prettiest. My Alaya cardigan shirt, this looks so good on. It's missing a button that I've been needing to replace for over a year, so I need to do that because if there's if I own something and it doesn't have any function to me, if something's beautiful, that means it has function. Like this 
this framed portrait of me, that has a function to me because it's beautiful and I have it in my space. This currently does not have a function to me because I can't wear it and I don't have it on display either and I don't want to. So just, I don't think owning things that have no function to you at the moment is fulfilling. That It might be different for you, but for me, that's like a very unfulfilling thing and it feels more like a burden to me. It feels like it weighs me down to own an object that I do not currently want to use and if I don't currently want to use it, then I probably will never want to use it. And that doesn't apply to winter clothing. Like, okay, it's summer right now. I don't want to use winter clothing, but that's very specific. If there's something that you own, but you don't like, get rid of it. My rouge denim jacket. This goes really well with um, a rouge denim skirt that I own. Actually, that's what I want to wear to the barbecue this weekend is like the denim, jacket with a matching denim skirt like such a sassy sexy like american vibe outfit so this is a yves saint laurent blazer that's very 70s looking and i haven't had the opportunity to wear yet and this is a chanel sweater that's double breasted and extremely pretty and i need to wear more often like i kind of need to force myself to wear this because i do love it but I just haven't really found a way to style it yet that I'm into, so I need to do that. Okay, we're on to bottoms and then outerwear. I don't like pants. That might be totally different for you, but personally, pants don't make me feel like the best version of myself at all. So most of the bottoms I own are like purely functional, like these Muji boxers that I sleep in sometimes, or just like wear around the house when I'm cleaning. I actually really like these. Sporty and rich workout shorts. These look like they're dirty. Um, anyway, yeah, let me throw these in the wash. I mainly hike in these. Sporty and rich leggings and Lululemon leggings. These sporty and rich leggings, I like them better than my Lululemon leggings. These are definitely a little worse for wear and I'm going to take them to Lululemon because supposedly you can like, don't they have like a lifetime warranty on their leggings where you can like, take in worn leggings and they'll supposedly replace them. So I'm gonna see if they actually do that. Again, I don't like pants, but I have these two pairs of sweatpants. These are like the more attractive ones from Sporty and Rich. And these are like huge fleece ones that my aunt gave me when I like went over her house a few summer, uh, winters ago. Rouge denim skirt, so classic. I love this skirt so much. I can't explain how like, I just love how classic it is. It fits super well. It makes my waist look tiny. Um, yeah, I might wear this to the barbecue this summer. I mean, this Saturday. Before meeting James, I got rid of a bunch of stuff because I was like, okay, I'm moving to England. Like, let me purge a bunch of stuff and like only keep what's gonna help me manifest him. Then I moved to England, met him, and when I was there, I was like, again, going through another like identity transformation. And I was like, I think I want to get rid of all the clothing in my wardrobe, basically. Like none of this, I don't know exactly who I am right now, but this doesn't quite feel like me. So I got rid of a bunch of like really high-end, beautiful pieces of clothing. And I spent the next like two years basically like being like, damn, I shouldn't have gotten rid of all that stuff because I don't really have anything to replace it with. I don't know fully what my style is yet and like what am I gonna do now I wish I just had that stuff and like why did I just impulsively get rid of it so this was one of the skirts that I got rid of it's this beautiful Scanlan Theodore skirt I think it's like a three or four hundred dollars skirt um I then like last year saw it on the real real for like forty dollars and was like why don't I just get it we'll see and I got it and <laughs> It is a beautiful skirt, but I never wear it anymore. And it made me realize like I wasn't wrong in getting rid of all of my clothing. Like that wasn't a terrible decision. Actually, it was a great decision because this doesn't quite feel like me anymore. It was who I was then. Is it me now? I mean, I'm keeping it because it is a beautiful piece, but I'm like very meh about it. I never wear it. I actually saw someone do a uh, TikTok post about this. They were like, 
when going through your belongings, ask yourself, is this who I want to be moving forward? Is this who I want to be moving forward? Great question. And when it comes to this skirt, no, it's not. The reason I'm keeping this skirt is because when I did do that massive purge, I got rid of this incredible Burberry pleated skirt. And I haven't found one quite like it. This one's from Brandy Melville and like a little on the short side. The thing is, James and I, James is British, my husband, and we are gonna move back to England at some point. And in England, pleated plaid skirts just make sense. They just do. So I'm holding on to this until I find a great replacement because if I move back to England without a skirt like this, I'm going to end up just buying a replacement. So is this who I wanna be moving forward here? Maybe not. Is this who I wanna be in England? I'm not sure. These just make more sense in England. Um, this is a pleated skirt that I bought at a thrift shop. I love it. It's more of a winter skirt, so I haven't worn it yet, but um, I have high hopes for it. Here is an activity I love. Hiking in a skirt. Casually hiking in a skirt. When I hike in a skirt, this is the skirt that I want to wear. Something long enough that I, I'm not like nervous that someone's going to see under my skirt. But why? Like, it's just a super comfortable linen skirt. Um, I know that sounds like a niche interest and activity, but it is something I like doing. So I have this skirt for that reason. I don't typically like denim or wearing blue jeans, but I have found that they come in handy. Like, I might need to paint the backsplash on the kitchen. I'll wear these jeans for that. I might need to like move. I'll wear these jeans for moving. You know what I mean? So like I own these jeans because they're functional. They come in handy every now and then, but like, I don't love jeans. That being said, do not use function as an excuse to create thing, to like hold on to things that you don't love. The truth is I think those jeans are okay. Like, but I also mainly own things I'm absolutely crazy about and love, and I mainly wear those things. So really, really, really don't let yourself hold on to a bunch of stuff that you feel meh about. My winter coat, I love her. She costs $15 at a church thrift shop. Um, she's fabulous and looks really good with that sporty and rich turtleneck sweater. My barber. She reminds me of hiking in England, in rubber boots. I love this raincoat so much, like genuinely brings me so much joy. And it's just like a great versatile piece. In college, my roommate and I ran in very different circles. She was a computer science uh, major. I was a philosophy major. We had different friend groups, but she and I were friends. So when she would try to describe to like her computer science people who didn't know me, who I was, she would be like, she's fur coat girl. And they'd be like, oh, I know exactly who you mean. Because I was the only person on my college campus at Swarthmore who would wear fur coats. I'm still passionate about fur coats. Yes, this is real. Yes, I also totally love faux fur. Um, I like both. And then my APC trench. I wish I'd gotten this like two sizes up. This is like kind of fitted on me and it's kind of hard to fit like bulky sweaters under here. And I also think it's great when trench coats like are voluminous and you can like tie it at the waist and make your waist look tiny. But that being said, I do love it. It's beautiful, classic. So I think when it comes to like adding things to your wardrobe and adding things to your life, buying things basically. It's important to have like kind of a criteria that you go on and put things through before you add it to your life. Here are the questions I ask before bringing something into my life. And that is, will this one help me accomplish my goal? I always have a goal I'm working towards and it's always like a huge goal. So previously before I met James, it was like, will this object help me meet the love of my life? And it doesn't even have to be like directly like it'll help me like will buying this dress help me in my goal of meeting and marrying the love of my life um yeah 
it will because it'll help me be myself and like really like revel in my own delicious feminine energy and yeah it will so that's one question i ask myself the second question i ask myself is will this item help me be the best version of myself that is a question i take very seriously and if an item won't help me be the best version of myself i don't get it because why would i add something to like the physical space that i inhabit which basically these these things that i'm surrounded by my wardrobe my my apartment these are the tools that I use in life to create my future, to create my present and my future. So I only want to have the things that will help me create the present and the future that I want to participate in that involve me being the best version of myself. So number one, will this help me accomplish my goal? And number two, will this help me be the best version of myself. Let's keep going with the wardrobe tour. We're on to bags. In classic Marie Kondo fashion, I have bags in bags in bags. Let's go through them. I love both of these. Rouge basket bag, Jane Birkin basket bag from the same fish market in Portugal where Jane Birkin bought her famous basket bag. Next up, this is the newest addition to my bag collection. This was gifted to me by the brand Songmont. Um, see there? It is a very French girl style vibed bag. I've worn it a few times. And to be honest, I'm in love with the color. The color is so beautiful, that like cherry red. The lining isn't as nice as the quality on the outside. It really reminds me of the APC half moon bag or that like Cezanne bag that looks like this. Um, I don't know. It just feels a little normal for me. I'm kind of like, I like it, but I'm not obsessed with it. I do think that if you have kind of like more normal style, no shade about that whatsoever. Um, that you this is a really high quality bag and it costs 350 dollars. i think it retails for 350 which i think is a very fair price for this bag because like the hardware is really nice the leather is really nice it feels great i can tell it's gonna hold up with wear but yeah that's my opinion on it okay into the louis vuitton bag we go let's get out the hats my sun hats i just feel like this hat's very laura ashley and I'm very obsessed with it, and I also haven't really worn it yet. Ugh, yes, yes, I love this. Like, such a practical, like, gardening hat. This hat feels very old money to me. Like, the old money people that I know own hats like this that are very, like, you know, like, not a particular brand necessarily um but you know they wear them for gardening they wear it to the beach it's just a very kind of like waspy vibe to me it's also practical because like i can pack this i'm going to north carolina for vacay in like a week and a half so i can pack it and i don't have to worry about it getting smushed in my suitcase i love this bag the brand is called oleata I love this bag. See, this bag is, it's like a little bit unusual. Um, I like top handle bags a lot. It has a pocket in the back that perfectly fits your phone. So you don't have to get into the main pocket to get your phone in and out. I just, it's really feminine. It's big enough that I can carry like my sunglasses and my wallet and my keys and my phone in here. And that's all I really need. So I love this bag. The pride and joy of my collection my Chanel bag. Isn't she adorable? Isn't she classic? Isn't she a beauty? I love her. I love her. Um, and she obviously has a strap. And I haven't worn her as much as I thought I would this summer. Um, but maybe that's just because like I work from home and don't leave the house. Well, most days and don't leave the house a great deal, which I wanna change. But like, look at that, so pretty, 
So pretty, so pretty, so pretty. Um, you can also obviously wear this really long. I wear it as a clutch to weddings and such. This is one of my favorite items in my collection and I've used her so much that she's going. This actually belongs to my mom. My mom saw it recently and was like, ah, what have you done to my bag? Yeah, well, it doesn't stand up to wear very well. There, look, look, look. Um, it's snakeskin and I've worn this bag in the rain. Yeah, so I just think it's such a sassy bag. You see, it's not like a wildly unusual bag, but I think it's more unusual than the other bag. Like, I just like bags that are kind of more of a statement. Um, bags are my favorite. Like, I definitely prefer bags over shoes. Um, love this sassy little number. Another, like, kind of unusual bag. This is like a crocheted um, purse from the 50s. I bought it at a thrift shop for like $3 and I love it so much. My mom's best friend gave me this 1920s metal mesh bag when I was a teenager and I'm still so obsessed with this bag. It has a little label inside that says made in France. I do wear this to events sometimes. Such a gorgeous, incredible piece. And then we have my L.L. Bean Boat and Tote collection, which is three bags. We have the most classic one, which Carolyn Bissette Kennedy was photographed with this exact L.L. Bean bag on a boat, <laughs> um, I think in Martha's Vineyard. Probably my most um, commented on L.L. Bean bag. Everyone always seems to really like this one. I do too. It has these really nice leather handles. You know, it's just very simple inside. I do love this one. I got it secondhand at like a flea market, I think, in Pennsylvania. And this one belongs to my mom, except I've stolen it, so now it belongs to me. Um, yeah, it's, oh my God, Loki's at the door. Loki, my chihuahua. It's a great length and size. It's great for carrying a laptop around the city. If I go into the office, um, I'll probably bring this bag. It's my vintage Louis Vuitton carry-all. I love this so much and I wouldn't dare actually travel with it because this leather, I just don't feel this leather would hold up with a lot of weight in here, but it's basically a piece of decoration. It's an objet for my bedroom, which I'm obsessed with. Your things should bring you joy. They should make you feel like they elevate you and help you be the best version of yourself instead of weighing you down and being like a burden. Do you know what I mean? Okay, last but not least, shoes. My evening shoe collection. These I got both secondhand. These are secondhand Manolo Blahniks from the 90s, from the real real. And these, I think I got at Beacon's Closet while trying to sell clothing there. They're these like amazing Sonia Reichel leopard print shoes. Ferragamo, very 80s heels. I love these so much. And these like genuinely perfect 90s Stuart Weitzman mules. Like I'm obsessed with these shoes. Uh, they look like they're straight out of Sex in the City. The pride and joy of my shoe collection, these Chanel black leather slingbacks. I love them so much. I do have Chanel flats that I'm not including here because I'm selling them because I feel like somehow they're just like a tad too small for me now. I don't know, they're not comfortable anymore. I was just gifted these really cute shoes by seven or nine. I've never heard of the brand before, but they're these cute metallic Mary Janes. I literally got them yesterday and for some reason they just won't stay on my foot. Like I tried to wear them and they my heel kept slipping out of them and they're my size. I don't know, there's something odd about them. Um, but they're like made to be very comfortable. Like they have like a comfy heel, they have padding at the toe. It's just, it's a shame. They, they don't really work for me. Flip flops for when I get manicures. 
um, running shoes slash gym sneakers. My rouge kind of 70s brown croc boots. These are so, they dress every outfit up. They like, you can put these with so many different outfits and they make it an outfit like that. I love that about these shoes. And I wear a pair of these into the ground every year. They're my espadrilles, which I love so, so, so much. And they're just like my tried and true summer shoe. No two wardrobes are gonna look the same because no two people are the same, you know? Like I really like girly princessy dresses and like feminine purses and feminine shoes in a very particular flavor. That's not gonna be your flavor exactly, probably. That's okay if it is as well, but like you're gonna have your own perspective on life and on your dream self. And that's the version that you should like be cultivating. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok. And until next time, besties.